not a whole lot of doctors in town. Matter of fact, this small town only had one doctor. We have places like that today, you know. Small country towns with just one doctor. Some of our towns in Idaho have no doctors. And so, she went to the one doctor. Her complaint was that there was a pain in her stomach. And the pain in her stomach, every time she moved or coughed, the pain would intensify. And it seemed like the pain was moving from here to there. And yet the pain was just causing her all kinds of grief. And so she explained to the doctor all the symptoms. She says, I'm even feeling sick to my stomach. And I have a little fever. Doctor, what is it? What would you guess? It was. You have ugly appendicitis. Sometimes they call it acute. I don't think it's too cute. Anyway, you have appendicitis. And so she says to the doctor, Doctor, can you do something about it? And the doctor said, I'm sorry. I don't do surgery. I just diagnose. Last week, we saw a diagnosis. As we stay today also in chapter 7, last week we were in chapter 7. And in our series on Romans, we cannot just breeze through chapter 7, and especially chapter 8, very quickly. And so I elected last Sabbath that we got to stay in chapter 7. Because we need to hear what Paul was saying in chapter 7, in this entire study. We also need to understand, and I will repeat this often through this series, you'll hear it often, we must understand context, and that Paul wrote this letter all in one setting. That Paul did not divide it into chapters or verses. But as you look at where Paul is coming so far, last week, and I think we understand it now, the purpose of the law was what? What's the purpose of the law? To point out our condition. The purpose of the law as the diagnostician, the doctor that can't do surgery, the law can only point out our problem. As we saw last Sabbath, the law is like a light and it shines on us. And as the light shines on us, you know, there's some things that show up that we did not even know were there without the light. Have you ever gone into the bathroom and not turned on the light as you look in the mirror? I know as we get to a certain age, maybe that's the preference. <laughs> Sue and I were telling each other right now, hey, it's not so bad if we leave our glasses off. You know? We look much better. You know, we don't see those wrinkles or anything <laughs> with the glasses off. Well, let's maybe just, we we're kidding each other, let's just leave our glasses off. For when you put the glasses on, and especially when you turn a light on, some things show up that really you wouldn't like to see too well. And so last Sabbath maybe was a little painful for us because what did we do with the law? We took a light with Paul's help here in Romans 7 and we showed the light on the law. And as you look at the law, and just an example, Paul and Jesus does this too. One of the commandments says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. 
as Jesus shone the light on it in a greater way, what did he say? If you look what? If you look with lust, you've already what? You've already committed adultery. Well, the commandment says you shall not murder. How did Jesus amplify that with a large spotlight? If you hate your brother, what? You've already broken the commandment. And so the spotlight was shown on the commandments last Sabbath. And as we saw the purpose of it, Paul said, I would not have come to know sin except through what? The law. And then he talks about coveting. We also discovered last Sabbath that there was only one person who has kept the commandments perfectly. And who is that? He's the only one. 1 Peter 2.22 Jesus who committed no sin nor was any deceit found in his mouth. And so, you say, Pastor, why are we dwelling on this some more because it's such a negative chapter? I think we need to understand what Paul is saying and what he went through because I believe if we do not understand if we do not realize the sinfulness of sin, we take things so leisurely and we do not know how serious it is that we understand what we have inherited and what we have done ourselves. And so before we get to the greatest chapter in the Bible, many have said, we're going to deal with verses 14 through 24.